Tuning up your instrument, son? Huh? Oh, <laughs> hi, Pop. I uh, didn't see you standing there. Yeah, so I notice you're supposed to be practicing, aren't you? Oh, gee, Dad. Shooting arrows is much more fun. Besides, I can't play this thing. You could if you practiced. Remember, <laughs> practice makes perfect, which reminds me of a fable. Everything reminds you of a fable, doesn't it, Pop? Yeah, well, almost everything. This fable is called The Canary and the Musical Hares. Rabbits are very talented people, especially two rabbits who were musicians. Year after year, they toured the forest, delighting the citizens with their virtuosity. Well, Johan, what'll we start off with today? How about Beethoven's 46th? Beethoven never wrote a 46th. <laughs> Does it matter? No, it didn't matter. For you see, those two rabbits had stumbled upon a great idea. Although they went through the motions of playing, not a sound did they produce. This, of course, fascinated the audience. They came from far and wide to stare in wonder at the silent orchestra. You are? You were flat in the introduction. I know, it's my E string. Too much resin. The close of the performance never failed to bring a rousing tribute from the onlookers. Along with a monetary appreciation. Hey, keep your eyes open for an Indian head nickel. I'm saving them. Okay, you keep your eyes open for a nickel headed Indian. I am saving them. As usual, the tour was a magnificent success. In forest after forest, it was the same old story, standing room only. And then the trouble began. The boys were halfway through Gershwin's Rhapsody in Brown when suddenly, out of nowhere, a canary appeared on the stage and began to sing. The hairs were shocked, and so was the audience. Somehow or other, didn't seem right to hear music coming from the stage. Jake, shoot him! What with my cello? And it was too late anyway. One by one, the audience wandered off, and the concert was a resounding flop. Well, uh, thanks a lot, Canary. I guess you know you just ruined our performance. Yeah, what's the big idea? I want to sing with your band. What? We don't have no use for singers. Yeah, go see Lawrence L. for somebody. And with that, the two hares packed their instruments and departed for the site of their next concert. Ah, but that canary was not to be denied. It's him again. Do you kill him in the head with some bird seed before the audience walks out on us again? Yeah, but unfortunately they had no bird seed and no audience. Hmm, nice going, Canary. You did it again? Yeah, I got a good mind I'm to... sorry, fellas, but I just gotta sing. And with your band. Well, I guess we got no alternative but to hire you. What? Come on, let's uh, get some sleep. Ludwig, the trombone playing hare, had a devilish plan in mind. Psst. Johan. Psst. But now's our chance to get rid of the canary. Take this rocket, tie it to his foot, and light it. You better do that, Ludwig. I'm not very good at this sort of thing. It's easy. Look, this is my foot, right? Yeah. And this is the rocket, right? Yeah. You tie the rocket to the foot like this, right? Yeah. Then you light it. The foot? The rocket. You mean like this? Yeah. <laughs> Johan. Yeah. Look, we got to give that bird the air. Sure, what do you got in mind? Well, if you'll notice, we are standing on a cliff. Directly below us stands the canary. Now, you go down and engage him in conversation. While you are so engaged, I will drop this boulder on him. It was a splendid plan, unfortunately, five minutes later. Well, did I get him? Nine, he got tired of talking to me. He wandered off. Where is the rock? What rock? The rock I pushed off the cliff. You didn't push any rock off the cliff. I did too. You didn't. I did. I didn't. I didn't. Did. Did. It was obvious that the canary would always be an integral part of the group. It was also obvious that another failure was imminent. Ah, but fate was kind, though, for out of nowhere, a sudden cloudburst appeared, deluging musicians, audience, and canary alike. And, just as suddenly, the cloudburst departed, leaving a mighty soaked concert. It also left something else, a case of laryngitis with the canary. Yes, sir, no matter how hard he tried to sing, the poor bird couldn't utter a note. The hares were back in business again. What's more, before every appearance, they sprinkled their vocalists with a generous supply of water, thus ensuring laryngitis and a silent concert. And that's why I always say practice makes perfect. I don't think that moral fits, Pop. You don't, eh? No, I, I got a better one. A bird in the band is worth two in the bush. Uh, let's shoot some arrows, son.
Thank <laughs> you.